Hey everybody, it's your old friend Gary Lucas here on a Saturday, very rainy Saturday afternoon here in New York City in the West Village and uh, I'm going to play for you for half an hour or so and uh, well, let's just get right down to it. That's a, that's a piece that called Jump for Joy. I remember composing that one in Mykonos, Greece, on holiday with Caroline so many years ago. And uh, we had this great, inexpensive uh, hotel room that was right on the beautiful crystalline waters there overlooking the bay. And it was very conducive to uh, a composing frame of mind, but I remember Caroline tugging at my sleeve. I was trying to finish this this instrumental, like, we gotta go, we gotta go eat, we gotta go eat. And uh, I don't know, often when I'm really in the throes of writing a song, my, uh, my equilibrium is thrown off by external uh, forces beyond my control, including a hungry wife, but what have you. Now, 
I gotta get my cheat sheet over here to remind me what I was gonna play for you today. Ah, yes. I made a little list and I'm checking it twice. Okay, we started with a request from Phil Polly, who's a Facebook fan, a very good supporter of the show. He wanted to hear something by the great Bahamian guitarist Joseph Spence. So I've obliged him there with a version of Out on the Rolling Sea, which I covered back in the day when I was working with the great American folk artist, psychedelic folk artist, Peter Stanfield. We had an ensemble called The Do Tells. I think that's on our, our album, uh, No Knowledge of Music Required, which is quite the collector's item. That's a hot tip for you. And, uh, okay, well, I got your attention here in the... Uh, in the rapping department, I want to thank from last time, because I ran out of time, Paul Marcus. Uh, these are people who contributed to uh, the Fresh Air Fund for me and Caroline on of PayPal. Paul Marcus, Linda Roberts from the UK, my dear friend, thank you, Linda. And she wrote, thank you for the music and much more. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm happy to, uh, to be, uh, of service to everybody here to try and lift your spirits in the pandemic. Uh, Chris Clark, uh, that was a really generous gift and I, I so appreciate it. Reed Nuss, who wrote, I've been listening to you since the Beefheart days. Now that goes way back. The Beefheart days for me and for Don, I mean, in music ended pretty much in 1984. Keep it up while I try. And I intend to. Mark Green, what can I say? Not the politician, mm -hmm. but a really cool friend now on Facebook who's a multiple contributor here, as is Stan Prover, who wrote Andrea. I guess that's his wife. Andrea might kill me, but I'm enjoying your concert so much that I'd make another contribution to the cause. So that's, that's really nice. And lastly, Phil Stutt, who just came in. <laughs> Right before I went live here with, uh, I love his uh, hashtag on PayPal, which is make money and work from home. I, that's a, been trying to follow that, that advice for a while here. Now at least three months of solo concerts and they're all archived. If you go to my page, you'll see uh, a link you can click so you can check out, for instance, my Captain Beefheart tribute, which I finished up last week which was very, very successful uh, in terms of numbers of likes. And uh, I don't think that's always the criterion for a successful concert, but everybody is so click conscious and like conscious. I mean, people can buy likes, I'm told. I know there's an artist out there who's telling me he had a million likes. Of, you know, I mean, they're likes for sale. Uh, no offense here, uh, but I digress. The main thing is how many views. You know, and they, these concerts usually get a couple thousand views, so please do share them, even if you don't contribute. Because, you know, I'm trying to spread the word and have everybody in my, uh, my guitar army here. Maybe you saw that little graphic earlier, so. So I'm gonna do a number from Ordeal of Civility, uh, and uh, it's called Yudvabni now. You know, uh, I want to also thank at least four or five hundred people came to mention and offer condolences on the death of my mother, Adele Goldman Lucas. Uh, my sister Lori wrote it up for the Riverside Press Enterprise and it was published yesterday and I posted it and uh, I really, really appreciate it. The whole family does, of course. And anyway, uh, that side of the family, my family is made up on my mother's side of the Goldman family. Uh, the original family name was Pikarski, which means baker. And uh, the other side of the family, uh, the Lucas side of the family, that was actually originally Lichtenstein, that was changed at Ellis Island uh, when my great-grandfather came over as an immigrant from Bohemia because they thought that Lichtenstein was a too foreign a sounding name, so Lucas it is. Anyway, uh, it doesn't sound very Jewish. Well, there's actually a lot of French Lukashes, so uh, it could go either way. But uh, 
Anyway, on my mother's side, I was always very much made aware of uh, anti-Semitism due to uh, my mom reading an article that was in Life magazine in 1957. They published Anne Frank's diaries with a picture of her on the cover. And this so horrified me uh, and my siblings, but especially me, I recall saying to my mom, so when did this happen? You know, when was their war against Jewish people in Europe? I mean, there've been a lot of them. And uh, she said, 1944 and 45, I think Anne Frank was arrested in 44, sent to the gas chambers in 45. So I did a little quick calculation and even at five years old, which I was then, I was horrified because I thought, wait a second, this is 1957, that was only 12 years ago. And even then with the, you know, how passage of time seems like an eternity when you're that young to go from year to year, that didn't seem like a whole lot of time had gone by. And I said, well, what happened to our family there? How come we have no relatives in Europe? And she said, well, all the Jews in the town that the family came from, which was Yedwabne, Poland, were rounded up one day and put in a barn that was set on fire. And a few escaped to tell the tale. And uh, anyway, they had gone back, my mom and dad, to try and find the, you know, the scene of the crime and dig up more information, but they were misdirected by a lot of people in Yudvavni. But some many years later, uh, a book came out by a professor at Princeton, a Polish professor of history, Jan Gross, called Neighbors. And this book basically did a lot of research and and came out with the assertion, which has been backed up, not really uh, contravened by anybody seriously, that in fact it was, uh, it was a crime under Nazi occupation, but that the Polish neighbors of these Jewish families that they'd lived alongside for hundreds of years turned on the community and uh, you know, bore some responsibility. Certainly they seized their property as soon as they got rid of the Jewish community there. Anyway, the then president of Poland in 2001, uh, Kaznowski, invited all of the surviving Jewish family members around the world to an official apology ceremony because this book created such a stir. So my family designated me to go there and I've written an account of it. And if you go to my website under writings, you can read a letter from Yudvabni, which was fresh in my mind. I met a rabbi there who realized I was a musician and uh, the group kind of bonded together. And on my last day there, he said, I think you should put a song, make a song about this experience. You know, So he, he put me up to it and I followed up on it. And so this is Yudvavni, and it's on my last studio album with Gods and Monsters. Hopefully not the last one. As soon as I can reconvene the guys, I've got a whole bunch of new songs. But uh, this is Yudvavni from that album. <laughs> Watch out for the future in front of you. 
blood of the innocent man streams in the skies. All the streets of your drive were covered with snow. Neighbor killed neighbor and friend became foe. Oh, you'd find me a poster offline. Oh, you'd find me what future for you. The earth now gives up. forget and uh, I try not to so let's move a little bit to electric guitar here and let's see where, where we are with the tuning I haven't touched this baby since last time actually I prefer in the house to play acoustic mainly to spare my neighbors <laughs> uh, the walls are kind of paper thin here and uh our little schnauzer Lulu has gotten us in bad trouble because she has a bark as a weapon. But, uh...
that's Ultra Shark. She was on an album of mine called Coming Clean. Let's see. been writing up a top five Captain Beefheart albums uh, during the pandemic. I just finished it off some Thursday night with an appreciation of uh, the great Doc at the Radar Station album, which I play on the number. I didn't mention, I also play French horn on the number, the song Best Batch Yet. Yes, I used to be uh, playing French horn at the same time I started studying guitar. When I was nine in the fourth grade, I took a music aptitude test that was a mandatory test in my public school, George Washington Elementary School. And I scored a perfect score on it. And the band leader, a guy named Mr. Ayanata, said, you need to study French horn, <laughs> uh, which was kind of ludicrous insofar as I don't really have uh, much of an upper lip here, as you may notice. Uh, to make a good embouchure, and it's a very difficult instrument intonation-wise. I mean, to get a good tone and also to keep it in tune is a bitch. But I did love playing in the band and the various all-city bands and all-city orchestras. I played French horn for many, many years uh, and have great memories playing it. But eventually I was kicked out uh, by this guy for wearing sandals to rehearsal in the band room. I think this was in 68. Uh, also, I was caught improvising on a march. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? You know, I was trying to jazz it up like Dixieland, you know. All right, so I'm gonna move now, last up here to the old tranti, as my mother would call this instrument in Yiddish. My workhorse, National Steel Duolian from the 20s. I have a Chinese manufactured one over there, but lately I've been favoring this one. So, all right, I'm going to do a little bit of an arrangement of a piece by Leos Janacek, who's one of my favorite composers, great Czech composer, uh, Janacek. And uh, I've done a whole album of Czech classical music under the title, Gary Lucas plays Bohemian Classics. I think it's on Bandcamp. It's certainly downloadable on iTunes and other portals. And I think it's really darn good. I put a lot of work into it. And uh, this is a short little one that was, uh, 
I was steered to this by my friend David Spellman, who runs the New York Guitar Festival. He said, I think this would sound really good on a guitar. So, so here we go. The Cunning Little Vixen.
it's such a pleasure to play for you. I love to play for y'all. I think it's time now. Uh, I bid fond farewell. Stay cool. Wear your masks. I could go on and on, but there's so many uh, young people, especially walking around here without masks. And uh, according to uh, reliable medical sources, there's a big spread going on because 20, 30, and 40 year olds who are not practicing social distancing or wearing masks are taking it on the road and they're asymptomatic and they're infecting people. So please, please wear your mask. And uh, I look forward to seeing you here again every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Love you guys. Take care, and I'll see you on the flip-flop on Tuesday. Bye now. Have a great weekend.